Hello class, so in this video we're going to be talking about properties of exponents. So if you stumble across this from my class and you're looking for the video for homework, this is the thing that it is so you're in the right place. Alright, and if you're not, then properties of exponents, let's do it. Alright, so here are the four that we're going to look at. These first two, I want to go through the proofs for them specifically so that you don't confuse what's multiplied and what's not because both of them, if you just look at them, might lead you to think multiplication. But, no. Alright, and then these ones always get weird things from students. So, yeah, negative exponents doesn't mean that you're going to get something negative. We'll see why that is later on. So, let's just get started with this then. Alright, so, in this first one, let's look at these two and start to analyze them. So I'm going to color code this yellow and color code this blue so we can kind of work with them individually then together. All right, x to the a power. What that means is you have x times x times x. How many times? It multiplies to itself a times. So whatever that exponent is, that's what that, that's what happens. All right, x to the b power. What happens? Exact same thing except there is one thing that's different. The one thing that's different is that this happens b times. So the question then is, what if you take x to the a power, multiply to x to the b power? Well, what that gives you is a bunch of x's multiplied, right? So from to the a power, what we get is this thing happening a times then it's multiplied to a different quantity that quantity is x times x a different number of times and that would be b times so what if you were to actually try to count how many a's were happening here overall what you would see then is that this happens a plus b times so remember that the exponent just tells us how many times x, or whatever the base is, is going to be multiplied to itself, right? So then this happens, a plus b times. In other words, we have x to the power of a plus b. Alright, so that wasn't too bad, right? So now let's look at this one. Okay, so x to the a to the power of x to the b. So again, just going to color code that real quick so that we can analyze them slightly separately. Okay, so what this means is, you're, is you will take x to the a and multiply it to itself. Question is how many times? So multiply multiply, multiply, and the number of times that this happens is b times. Well, what happens on the inside though? This is x times x times itself. How many times? This is b times, or a times, sorry. So you have something happening a times, and then that thing itself is happening b times. So that means overall what is happening then is this thing is happening a times b times. So in other words, we have x happening a times b times. So if you want to see that flesh out a little bit more, you can kind of think of it as x times x a times, and then think of actually literally doing that over and over and over. Okay, come on, copy. All right. And 
and then you'll see that that thing happens b times and therefore a times b times all right so that's those two now let's move on to the last stuff negative and fractional exponents this is always an interesting topic so let's just go through non-negative stuff first and then see how that goes all right so starting here we have three to the one power so i've labeled exponent is going to be that row and then value with the exponent and then final value so let's just look at that so that's the exponent three to the one what value does that produce that produces three all right then if we go over this is like a number line, but not exactly a normal one. So how that works is we're going to multiply by some base. This is the base. We're going to multiply by that each time we go over. So each of these little slots basically just tells us how many times we went over from a certain place. Okay. And we'll talk about that certain place later. You'll see why that's important. If we go over again, then we get 3 to the 2. And that is just 9. Go over yet again, multiplying by 3, we get 3 cubed. Then we get 27. You start to... I'm sure you're starting to see the point. So, let's think about a normal number line then. That's not this multiplication one. How do you get from, say, 5 to 6? Well, in a normal number line, you just add 1. Well, how do you get from 6 to 5? You subtract 1. So, if we think about it that way, how do we go backward from here? Instead of multiplying by 3, you would do the inverse of it, which is divide by 3. So, let's look at that going from 81 and on. So, divide by 3, we get 27. Divide by 3, we get 9. Divide by 3, we get 3. Divide by 3, now we get... Okay, so what's the exponent here supposed to be? We've been subtracting 1 from each exponent, right? So 1 minus 1, what is that? 0. And if we divided the yellow numbers here by 3, what we get then is 1. Okay, interesting. So something to the 0 power is just 1, right? Cool. So let's move over another one. So what does the exponent become? Again, we're just subtracting 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So 3 to the negative 1... It's going to become, all right, divide 1 by 3, we get a third. Move over yet again, exponent is going to be negative 2. And we get 1 over 9, because that's a third divided by 3, which is 1 third times 1 third, which also is 1 over 3 squared. So notice that. That's why when we have x to the negative n power, that's just 1 over x to the n. Because negative exponents just means you're dividing by that base rather than multiplying. So the question is, what are we dividing and what are we multiplying? Where's that starting place, so to speak? Well, normally we start from 0 when we're counting anything, right? So if we're starting from a count, so to speak, of 0, then 3 to the 0 is 1. So we're actually just transforming the number 1 with exponents by either multiplying it by 3 or dividing it by 3 a certain number of times. So like 3 to the negative 2 power just means divide 1 by 3 twice. In other words, 1 over 3 squared versus 3 to the second power over here just means multiply 3 to 1 twice. So 3 squared, 9. Okay, so let's apply that same principle down here with fractional exponents. I decided to use a different number line just because it's going to be way too cluttered to do it all up there. Alright, so if we look at this then, what if we only went halfway here? So instead of multiplying by a full 3 to the 1 power, we're multiplying by 3, but we're only going a half step. 
So remember up here, this exponent just represented the number of steps you're going from one, right? So here, we're just going a half step from one. So this is three to the one half power. So we're starting from one and then going over and then that's three so what if we went over by three to the one half two times then we get three well that should remind us of something actually so if you took the square root of three and multiplied it to the square root of three we get three if you look at this Remember, in order to move over here, what we're doing is multiplying, right? Here, we're multiplying by a full 3 to the 1 power. And down here, we're multiplying by 3 to the 1 half power. And then we multiply by sh itself, and we get 3. That's interesting. That's actually the same thing that's happening here. You go two half steps, and you get the full 3. Here, you're square rooting, multiplying it together, and getting the thing inside. So what's really happening is you're multiplying something to a half power times something to another half power. And if we look at property 1, that actually makes a lot of sense then, because then the powers add, we get 3 to the 1, which is 3. Or you can look at it this way. 3 to the 1 half, we want to multiply by itself twice, so we square it. So 3 to the 1 half times 2, 3 to the 1, so property 2. So fractional exponents are just roots. So square root, cube root. So cube root, what I mean by that is if we look at, let's say, going a third of the way instead of 1 half, so 1 third of the way, that would be 3 to the 1 third. If we do that 3 times, we get 3, which is the definition of a cube root. Alright, so this is what the basic properties of exponents tell us and how they work, and this is an explanation of why they work the way they work. Alright, so that's the end of this video. Hopefully it was helpful. I will see you in the next video.